Hey VC, uh, Jeff back again. Uh, another ill-advised late night uh, listings tax session. Um, yeah, just marathon. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Mayor of Easton, East Town. I, they should have been Easton, I think. But uh, anyway, <laughs> um, excellent series. If you haven't seen it, worth. Yeah, I guess everyone's talking about it these days. But yeah, definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. Um, don't worry, not gory. If there's uh, that kind of thing uh, disturbs you. Um, yeah, so let's jump in there. Got quite the stack. Uh, still off on uh, disability. Um, still not walking very well, but uh, back is feeling a lot better. Um, but yeah, I still can't like walk and stand up very long. So hopefully that resolves itself uh, pretty soon. Doing physical therapy a few times a week. That's always fun. Um, but yeah, let's just jump in here. Got a long, big old stack. Uh, I know I've shown this before, but yeah, this is a classic adverts. Um, this is like a not like early '90s repress from the UK, but uh, yeah, um, so I believe this came out like '79-ish. So it's yeah, kind of that last push of the original punk, um, kind of bordering on post-punk. But um, yeah, classic album worth checking out if you never heard it. So um, yeah, if you like punk, um, early post-punk. Excellent, excellent album. Might, that might make my top 100, I don't know. Still working on this. Uh, I've shown this before, but this is a comp. Um, I believe this band's out of um, Netherlands or something. So it's Smoltz. Smoltz is the band. Um, this is a comp of uh, some of the work, um, late 90s, 2000s. Um, experimental, um, on the noise kind of thing. <laughs> Daughter because I was like, I like the bird. <laughs> it's kind of disturbing. Uh, it's a dead bird. Um, and again, uh, I got a video of uh, there's a burst <laughs> outside our window. <laughs> and she wasn't at all disturbed by the fact that a crow ate all the bird babies. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully she's all right. Excellent taste in music, though. Uh, pretty good album. Um, yeah, so... This, you know, so I'll, I'll go back a little bit. So this, you know, four and a half plus, it's a really solid album. Um, this solid four, four and a half again, quite solid. Um, it's one of those albums like you're playing, it's like, does this, is this a 45 or a 33? Because it's it sounds too slow at 33, but it sounds too fast at 45. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a 33. Um, this was one of the pickups I did uh, when I was uh, on vacation not that long ago. So Leon uh, Kop Kopke, if I'm missing screen that up. Um, so my only other album I have by him is the one he did with John Fahey. Uh, so he did this I think the year before or the year after. I can't remember. But um, roughly the same point. It's a really good album actually. You see this, they don't go for much. Uh, um, guitar. So I guess, I guess it's sort of a folk album. But um, yeah, it has vocals. Uh, kind of a little bluesy based, but it's, it's more it's a lot more folk. Pardon not that does not be bass at all. Uh, it's folk, <laughs> I guess, but um, it's good guitar. So you know, highly recommend it. You know, if you see this one, you pick it up for a few bucks. It's worth having. Um, it kind of like his instrumental stuff a little bit better, but it, it's still really good. Yeah. Still, um, yeah, pick this one up from the same place. Uh, this is Carlos Santana and John McLaughlin, or I always screw this up. Mahavishnu John. Um, yeah, John McLaughlin. Don't be fooled by the cover, because <laughs> I think this is why it doesn't go for a lot of money. Um, so this is like a VG Plus or better copy. Um, so he's covering a lot of John Coltrane's um, Love Supreme on this one. Yeah, very, very culty, Harry Krishna looking. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you like that other one, the was it the uh, Mahavishu Flame or whatever that one is, uh, this is pretty much the companion piece to that. So two excellent guitarists in their prime, worth having. Um, again, it, you can probably pick it up sub it under 10 and if you look around or bargain in it. Yeah, this is another one I um, bought recently. It's one of, one of the only new new ones I bought. Uh, reissue from a few years ago. It sounds pretty good for what it is. Uh, I have the feeling the originals uh, aren't the best, so I don't know. There might be a better pressing. But um, yeah, this is kind of like a blue vinyl. I'm not going to point it out, but yeah, there's a lot of people talking about it. So one of the very first electronic albums in 
you can really hear it uh, influencing uh, bands like Suicide and you know you got your I guess the Tory Lanez or whatever later. Um, Shaka Khan album in size, <laughs> not this one. Um, so it's got uh, I feel for you on the inside. Um, this is part of that uh, crazy hardcore score I had last summer. <laughs> this this was like in there. Um, I just kind of threw it in there because I actually wanted I feel for you, but I didn't notice it was the wrong. Yeah, you know, it was a mismatch. Uh, whoops. So I, I saw the empty feel for you <laughs> in case I grabbed the wrong letter. But um, yeah, this is actually a really good um, kind of R&B album. I think I showed this once before. I played again recently because I'm still not studying at home since I'm homebound. So. Um, Maynard Ferguson, Conquistador. Um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, jazz funk, I guess. Um, soul jazz. Soul jazz. That's what I was looking for. Soul jazz. Uh, it's, Kind of interesting in that it's got, um, he's covering, uh, what, that, the Rocky theme, he's covering the Star Trek theme, <laughs> so it's just pop, it's like soul jazz, pop, jazz, whatever, it, it's, it's actually really good, um, yeah, if you, you'll find it in a bargain bin, pick, you know, pick it up for a fuck, it's, it's worth having. Uh, this one, Van Morrison, Wavelength, um, 80s Output, um, like Goodwill, whatever. It's actually a pretty good one. It's a very clean copy. Um, you know, for I'm not a massive um, Van Morrison fan, but you know, it's, it's in the vein of you know, Astral Weeks or something like that. It's it's pretty good, but it's not not Astral Weeks good. But you know, four ish. Yeah, for what I paid, I'm, I'll probably hold on to it for a while. Um, this one I wasn't just kind of a blind buy just because it was in a really good shape and it just looked interesting. But it, it turned out, um, yeah, it's not so much. I thought it might could be like Soul or. Like early soul or uh, good R and B or something, but it's it's crooner stuff. I was wrong. Um, I was not familiar with Tony Edwards, but yeah, if you like crooner stuff, it's not bad. But again, I wouldn't I wouldn't like search it out. But uh, it's a comp on um, MGM Records. It's got the one like you see with all the time with the movie soundtracks, the lion and the kind of uh, yin yang. Yeah, it's all right. You know, three and a half, four. But yeah, it's it's a good for a crooner album. But yeah, not a massive crooner fan, but it's it's good on occasion. I'm probably not going to keep that in the collection. I'll probably pass it on in the condition it's in. Um, this again was a cheap thrift find a while back. I finally got around to it. Sound of Boots, as in uh, Boots Randolph. Uh, General Mind. Uh, Jack got a cover of Jackson on here. <laughs> Surprisingly good, actually. Uh, who is on this album? Yeah, so it's, it's one of those, it's kind of like, again, poppy jazz, but pretty solid. Um, it's nothing, you know, nothing challenging, but I'd still give it a four. It's, you know, it's good for what it is. Uh, this one, get soul jazz. Um, I overpaid for this because the, the condition was not as good as I thought it was when I was looking at it in the store. So definitely overpaid because it's like, it's a, like BG-ish. It has some, like a big scratch I didn't notice, but it plays through it. But it has, yeah, it still has a little surface on it, so I need to give it another cleaning. Um, so, Eddie Harris, uh, kind of, you know, soul jazz, mid-70s, mid I think. Um, yeah, four, four and a half. This is a, you see this in the BC. It's good. And this is another thrift find. Um, uh, even though it's water damage, the vinyl's in pretty good shape. It looks VG plus. Righteous Brothers, um, uh, this is the one that has, um, Unchained Melody on it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I think I might have a comp of them. I I, I don't know. I'm probably not going to hold on to this one. It's three-ish. It has a few highlights, of course, but um, I'll probably just get a Righteous Brothers comp and be done with it. It's honestly, I only need or seven inch or so. Don't need that in my collection. <laughs> um, then I got a massive stack of CDs because I've been sitting in my chair studying. So, Judy Bats, um, this is pretty solid, a four ish. Um, so, it's if you like uh, like Smith's Morrissey, it's kind of in that vein. So, Native Sons, I think this is their first album. I think the second album with the truck is the one everyone raves about, and after that, they kind of drop off. So, pick up this or the one with the truck on it, and you're good. If you like, uh, you know, Morrissey kind of stuff. Uh, this one's pretty good. Um, Burning Star Core Challenger. Um, Noise, experimental, um, 
you know, soundscape -y kind of stuff. Not for everyone. It's not like harsh noise, but it is pretty good. Um, yeah, four or four and a half on that. It's, it's somewhere in there. I, I, we'll take a few more listens. I listened to it maybe one and a half times. This one I have listened to a lot. Uh, I used to have this on um, like MP3 or something. I was kind of surprised to see this at the store. Um, I went to a uh, you know second and Charles you know used bookstore. Surprised to see this in the, the bargain bin. Uh, so it's somewhat obscure. It's a, a Canadian indie pop band. This album, I think, was 2003 or four. I don't know. When it came out, I was like really into this album. Um, so it's, how would I describe it? It's like, it's, it's, they pretty much, you would expect them to be like a Caroline band. So you can think of like um, Concrete Blonde, but with a organ. <laughs> That's a pretty accurate description, I'd say. Uh, very good album. Um, if you'd asked me like a few years ago, I probably would have gone like four and a half. I'd probably back it up a little bit, but um, I don't know. It hasn't aged as well as I would have liked, but it's still a pretty damn good album. Um, you could probably find this for cheap without, you know, four and a quarter. It hasn't aged as well as I'd like, but if you like Concrete Bond kind of stuff, uh, it's, it's pretty good. If you like Caroline Bands, you'll like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say much on this one, you know, I found it at the thrift, uh, so we bought this Joshua Tree, holds up really well, still, yeah, very, very solid album, um, bordering on five, even the, yeah, even they are you two, <laughs> do you like that one, uh, super good comp, uh, if you see this, this is the Rhino, uh, Bobby Darren, 20 hits, um, there's some, like a box set too, I think Rhino might have done, but yeah, for me, this is enough. Uh, so it's got 20 of his best songs. So it's going, it's got like, you know, the Splish Splash stuff, and then his day, um, Adrian Lover, Mac the Knife. So it's going from his kind of um, Elvis y rockabilly stuff into his um, crooner stuff, and then get, get later into his kind of folky, um, oh, what's his name? If like, it's kind of like a Biff Rose kind of thing later, but it's, it's pretty, really, really good CD. Like, a, that's pretty close to a five in my book. Um, so if you see any like that kind of stuff, yeah, it's worth picking up. Um, Dilated Peoples. This was a promo from a radio station. So it's got Platform Annihilation, Platform Remix. So of that um, kind of 90s, early 2000s, uh, turn to, this is 2000. So that kind of turntablism style um, hip hop, yeah, that's a pretty solid entry. Probably go for their albums, but yeah, I got that for I don't know, I think a buck or less. <laughs> I was kind of surprised to see that one, it's not that common. Uh, this was part of the K Rex one. This is a two, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, it's, I guess it's, it's sort of RB, it's sort of indie rock, but it, 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 it's pretty unlistenable. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going on the sale pile. I, that does not need another listen. It's, it's pretty horrible. Um, okay, this one, Thrift Time. You know it. You love it. Let it be naked. Um, didn't get through the. There's two discs. The second disc is like a. They had like the dialogue or the Beatles on this, but they went back to the. Um, I guess Paul McCartney went back to the tapes and just redid it the way he wanted it, not with Phil Spector. Uh, most of the material is actually better for it, and it opens up with Get Back. Um, so more, you know, a little more stripped down versions of all the stuff, but it's a different track listing, and it's a different order, different track listing. Um, it's, it's a stronger album overall compared to the original Let It Be. So I, again, I'm not a you know, I'm not a massive Beatles fan, but I, I do prefer that version. Um, but yeah, Across the Universe, may, maybe I like the original version better. I don't know. Um, this was a really good find, so I showed this in that CD find, so I can't make that out because it's not focusing very well. Uh, this is Julian Cope um, in Teardrop Express, uh, 1979 to 91. So it's broken. The annoying thing is that the tracks are by phase and not their actual track listing, so you have to do a bit of counting. So it's got phase one, and I got six songs from his uh, Teardrop Explodes era. Phase two is going 81 to 83, and then it's, you know, phase three, phase four, whatever. Um, but yeah, the annoying thing they did on this comp is they basically started the numbering over again. So it's like phase one, one through six, phase two, one through four. Yeah. 
But yeah, so the ones I listen to on this are the uh, Sunspots and uh, Sh World Shut Your Mouth. They're, they're kind of minor uh, radio hits, as I recall, on um, you know that college radio kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, really, really good comp. If, if you see this, is pretty much all the Julian Cope I need um, for me. Um, so this is on Island. So it's just called uh, Florid Genius, the best of Julian Cope. So that's uh, worth a listen. Maybe it's worth hunting down for this kind of power pop uh, loving people or you know, that pseudo psychedelic stuff. Um, we certainly started, started out that way, but it's, it's more of a power pop thing. Uh, another third sign I showed, I think, uh, Pearl Jam, I think this is their second album. Um, I think it holds up better than 10, actually. It's a really good one. Um, don't need to talk about that. This one's kind of surprised me, because I never liked them that much, but I was listening to them. I kind of like this. Uh, Goo Goo Dolls, uh, I think this is called Superstar or something. Yeah, Superstar Car Wash. Um, so I never really got that much into them. Um, this is maybe their first... Uh, major level one. I think they might have had a couple indie ones before this. Uh, so it's, it's kind of uh, like, a, like more modern power pop, I guess. Uh, it's, you know, it's not that hard rocking, but I actually really like that. I, I, I don't know. This kind of surprised me. Um, so I, I picked up another one of theirs, the one that came out like after this. So I'll give that a list and see if it still holds up. But that, that one kind of surprised me. This one, again, yeah, they're fine. I never actually owned this because I've never been a Chili Peppers fan. But, um, yeah, that was an early comp of their stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I would kind of consider this essential. And, like, you know, for me, I, I'm not going to... I'm kind of tempted to pick up Freaky Stiley because, like, all the stuff I like is pretty much all that album. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty good comp of their early stuff. You know, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, this one's excellent, excellent. Um, so Super Drag, uh, Regretfully Yours, which I'll also bring up this next one, which is kind of the same vein. Um, you know, Pavement, this one is The Corners. You know, both of these are probably four-ish, uh, but if you like one, you like the other. Really good albums um, for the most part. I guess uh, Crooked Rain, Crooked Rain is still the best Pavement one to go into, but you know, honestly, they all kind of sound the same. So. I, I, I don't know, unless I see a good deal on it, it's probably the only payment I'm going to hold on to for a while. Uh, I'll skip that. Yeah, this one's got a reissue lately, but I just lucked into this for a buck, so I bought it. Um, I used to have this back in the day, so Violent Femmes uh, added up 81 through 93. The weird thing, I, used to, I was thinking this was a, like a more of a best of comp, but... Yeah, it's really it's really not when you look at it. It's got a really annoying font. <laughs> like, ah, uh, got it. But yeah, if you get over the font, it's got a nice little booklet in there. And, but um, all this stuff's like either as like B sides or outtakes or um, stuff that was previously unreleased completely. Um, it has a couple of their big songs, of course, like "Blister in the Sun's on here and um, oh, what was their other one? Um, it's very, it's, it's a very uneven uh, added up song here, but it's a different version. Yeah, it's, it's some live stuff, so, you know, some previously unreleased stuff. It's got some really strong stuff, and it's got some pretty throwaway stuff on it. Um, but yeah, I think it's released as a, like a double album recently, so if you're a fan of this, you can check it out. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd still, I think I want to get their self-titled and their, um, is it their second or third album, the one with the black cover? But yeah, you get out of that. For a buck, whatever, man. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, this one, yeah, this one I give a five. I love these guys. Uh, Screamers, um, early LA punk. Um, this is their demos. They never had any official releases that I know of. Um, so there's some like acetates or something, but everything's pretty much demos. And there was like the Hollywood demos or something like that that came out recently. Um, this is probably the better of the two. There's a vinyl version of this too. Doesn't go for a ton, but yeah, you know, I got this for a bit less, so I'm not having to do a bid war on it. Um, and yeah, I figured it, you know, it was a comp anyway or whatever, so I figured on CD it wouldn't really matter. It's a bit like, um, it's kind of crappy recording quality, but yeah, I, I got it. Maybe I should have gotten it on vinyl. I don't know, but yeah, th this is a really good one. Um, if, you know, if you like Suicide, you'll like Screamers. So this is a really good one. Um, definitely better than the the new the Hollywood bootlegs or whatever it's called that came out. But that, um, that one's still pretty decent. Yeah, this one's kind of interesting. It's uh, this is something like um, 
Sean Thurman, uh, to what? Um, Kendall, I forget her last name, White? I want to say it's White, but yeah, you can figure it out from the spelling. It's not that hard to figure out. Uh, Kendall, this is our self-released, and then after this she did a bunch on K. Um, so you can you can see something's cooking here. I was really into it for a few tracks, and it got really repetitive. So it's got like 20 tracks, they all start sounding the same. Uh, banjo, it's banjo. Uh, banjo music, so like, kind of folky, banjo-y. Uh, it's, it's good, but it's very uneven. Um, basically, this would have made a really good, you know, six song at EP, and it would have been really strong. But yeah, it went on a little too long. But uh, looking at the reviews on the albums that came out after this, they, they all got really good reviews. So I would consider hunting one down, but I'll, I'll hold on to this for now. Uh, what else I got? Uh, more of the noise drone stuff. Um, this is. Deterioration Yellow Storms, Swans. At first I was kind of under the impression these were related to the Swans, but apparently they're not. Um, so, uh, Sean turned me on to this. So if you like kind of noise drone, um, this is a particularly good one. Uh, Born Half on my part. <clears throat> this is another really great comp I picked up not that long ago. So probably all I need of her, um, her like, 80s, 90s output. Um, I'm, I'm interested in picking up some of that early, like early, early stuff where she's full on, you know, plugging in the electronic stuff. Yeah, she, Susan Ciani, um It's just interesting to watch. Like, if you go on YouTube, you can watch some of those old um, David Letterman appearances. Like, pretty interesting. But yeah, she's definitely an early pioneer electronic music. Um, but this is, yeah, it's more, it's more of her compositions. Like, she was not, yeah. But, um, really, really good comp. That's probably the only one I needed. <laughs> um, so hers. Um, but I am interested in picking up her really early stuff because like more she's a little more experimental. Um, I've shown this before, but yeah, why, why not? This will definitely make my top hundred. So that's six. Sort of um, pop ripoff. I used to go see these guys all the time, or girls, I should say. So yeah, they're on Discord. Um, they had a release of this on vinyl. I'm not sure if it was originally on vinyl or if it was a, it was a very limited run at first, I want to say, because um, I, I wanted it back in the day on vinyl, but I could never get it. But um, I think it, it did have a re-release, you know, like I almost bought it. Maybe you can still get it. I don't know, but I might be happy with this for now. I have this. I have their second album on vinyl, but th this is the one that has. The, the second one's mediocre. Um, so it's, it's pretty pretty damn rough, <laughs> but it's, it's a fun album. I love it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, they're not really. They never really played with all the other Discord bands. They always played with like the Baltimore bands and all. It's a little bit of a different scene, but more of a you know they're more into like that kind of garage punk um, culture, like more of that West Coast thing. They were more into that than, than the other Discord bands. That's you know STP shirts, all that stuff. Um, you can kind of pick up on that you know, picture, maybe. I don't know. But um, regardless, of, yeah, I, I love that album. It's, but it, it's, yeah, it's four ish, but it's got a lot of charm. I see it, so I don't, I don't know how to say it. I, I just like it. And then the yeah, other ones, look. <laughs> it's actually not, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Um, Jimmy's Chicken Shack, uh, they're from uh, Annapolis, Maryland, where I grew up. Um, I saw this when I was digging and around here in Northern Virginia. I was like, I had to pick it up. Yeah, they have the Maryland place. Um, yeah, I don't know. They were trying to be, uh, you yeah, know, the, the kind of, um, like, I don't know, not, not Blues Traveler. They're trying to be a party band and Blues Traveler is on their mind. I don't know what they were trying to do, but Hootie and the Blowfish <laughs> are going for something on that slide. It's not bad. It was, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. So let's put it that way. Yeah, so the three and a half, four ish is in there. I, I don't know. If I keep it, it's more for uh, laughs. Cause like, yeah, one of my uh, good buddies, uh, a couple of them actually, they worked with him at a hardware store. <laughs> in, uh, when I was growing up, it's, you know, so I just thought it was funny when I ran into that, bought it for a buck or whatever it was. Anyway, uh, it's getting late uh, and this is running really long. Cause that was a hell of a stack. Um, so I'm just going to sign off. So I hope everyone's well. And let me get this uploaded. Take care, everyone.